as you will need. Of course, the fuel pump, a new one. I got that from AutoZone. And then an assortment of tools, a little catch pan made for any spilling fuel, a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, this lovely thing. Uh, I've got a size 12 socket to go with the socket wrench and two extensions. As you can see, I already have the vehicle lifted up. Fuel tank is on the right hand side of the vehicle. And some of the items that you have to unhook before taking down the fuel tank are the intake hose, which I've already disconnected, so it's free to move about. And so far, that's about it. As you can see, this is the back of the fuel tank. And I have two, two nuts there. And in the front, in a similar configuration, are two more. Okay, we're underneath the vehicle. You can see, kind of losing this one and that one. And over here is the fuel filter, by the way. It's a very interesting arrangement. It's got two separate size nuts. And I'm pretty sure only one of them fits. Plug the fuel filter so that the line doesn't get yanked down with the tank. Okay, I gotta at least unplug that side of it. Get some pliers, push the thing open and move it out of the way, and hope it doesn't break. So normally you do this, you squeeze open the little clamp and slide it back and everybody should move. However, it's 1990, nothing's ever that simple. When you put in the new one, these things have an arrow on one of the spigots that tells you which way the flow is. So in this case, this is that way. Okay, we have the jack in position. Alright, so now we have our jack hooked up at the bottom of the tank, holding it in place once I remove repeat for the back. And your tank should be supported by the jack. So once you take these off, it should not plummet onto your head. This is uh, part of the parking brake, which I'm uh, now removing so that I can take off the tank, which I still haven't managed to do. Since this is its way, and it's blocking it here all along the length. So I'm trying to unhook the parking brake so that it can at least come down a little bit more so I can reach at the top of the tank and unhook where the fuel pump is. So I've managed to remove the parking brake from there. The most pain in that spot ever, which was right there, because it was hiding behind a place where you could not reach. Uh, back there and a few other spots along the line. So now it just hangs and should allow the fuel tank to come down at least till here. Let's give it a go. Right now the tank is being held onto the truck via these lines, which if I want to take off the entire tank, I'm going to have to remove. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but over there, 
it would probably be best if you remove those as well. One to the big one, one towards the back, and the little one. Yay! There's sometimes brute force is the way. Now I can see all the screws that should hypothetically make this come off. So let's give it a go. So you have the fuel pump itself, a little filter at the bottom, the float that tells the, the level of gas, and let's see how this goes. So we have our old fuel pump, which you have the power one, which is the bigger one, and the grounding one, which is the small one. Uh, in terms of it going on this thing, the long cable that goes all the way to the top of the circuitry is your power one, goes in the big one, and the little one that goes nowhere except to the frame of the mechanism itself is your ground, which goes in the little one. Now, the interesting part is that your new fuel pump, and all the ones that I saw available at on the internet and autos on themselves, have two screws, and they come with these little clips that go in there and connect to the wires. Well, I'm going to follow the same configuration. Big one on the right, which is your power, ground on the left, as there are no instructions I go with this thing. So, what I have to do is cut the old thing that hooks up to the power to the fuel pump and connect the new ones via cutting and crimping into place. So, I'm going to start with the ground. So, I'm literally just going to cut it off and strip it. Stick it in and crimp it. So make sure your wires are touching the metal part. So now we just hook up your longer cable to the power one. your power and now ground oh, yeah. I could cut it and make it longer. That was too short, so I'm going to cut the one they came with.
if you want this to get all the way to the bottom, and make sure that this gets all the way to the top. So we got the power on, ground which I have to put back, the filter, that's pretty much everybody. We're back at the fuel tank. I've kept this cover so minimum stuff gets in there. Hopefully no stuff gets in there. It can only really go one way and that's the long way. Pop it back in. I got me a nice magnet for all my screws since I actually lost all the ones I had. Hook this one back in. Alright, so that's back on. Now let's stick it back in the truck. We got the tank mostly on. I just figured I'd leave the space to hook everybody back up. I got this already hooked in. I got this one that goes right there. So, for the rest of what you need to do is redo what you undid and hook up everything that you had unhooked including obviously all the screws and stuff and, and if you went along the way you take pictures and it becomes pretty self-explanatory. I hope this video has helped and that you have enjoyed the very short series of B2200 videos. Thanks for watching.